Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. In this video our focus is on consistency which falls under the larger topic of superposition. Now superposition has to do with the activity of adding and subtracting terms. When we talk superposition our focus is always on terms. Consistency has to do with the units of these terms. Now it does make sense for me to add and subtract quantities that have identical units. As an example, it does make sense for me to add 120 kilograms, 132 kilograms, and then subtract 84 kilograms. However, it does not make sense to add and subtract quantities that have different units. As an example, it does not make sense for me to do 25 meters plus 15 grams minus 18 seconds. And we call an equation consistent if all the terms in that equation have identical units. To explain, uh, let me uh, give you a couple of examples. Here is problem number one. On the right side, Francesca is driving from Toronto to Montreal a distance of 504 kilometers. This morning she drove at a speed of 120 kilometers per hour for 2.5 hours. What distance remains to be covered? The following equation models the problem. D represents the value of the remaining distance in kilometers. D is equal to 504, which is the distance from Toronto to Montreal, minus 120 times 2.5, which represents the distance that Francesca covered, has already covered. And what we have to do is to show that the equation is consistent. So what we'll do is we're going to identify our terms and then find the units of these terms. If the units happen to be identical, then the equation is consistent. Otherwise, the equation does not really make sense, like this one. All right, so there are three terms here. Uh, on the right side, if you take a look at the equation here, we've got the term D on the left side of the equation. 504 is a term on its own, and then there is the term 120 times 2.5. Let's list them and work out their units. Okay, so for problem number one, we have the term D, that's this term, and the unit of D is kilometers. Now, that one is implied by the body of the word problem, and we also they also told us uh, that that's the case, that we use kilometers to measure D with in, in this statement here. All right, the next term is 504. So let's take a look at that one, and the unit for this one is also kilometers. How do I know that? because the body of the word problem tells me so. In fact, if you're looking for the unit of any of the numbers that you are using in your equations, you can always take a look at the body of the word problem. Every time a numerical value is given, the unit that goes along with it is also given. So I know that 504 has the unit kilometers because the word problem tells me so. And uh, next we have the term 120 times 2.5. Now, this one is pretty interesting. To work out the unit of this term, we are going to write the unit for 120 and also the unit for 2.5 and then multiply them. 120, we go back to the body of the word problem, the unit is kilometers per hour. And for 2.5, the unit is hours. So we now have kilometers per hour times hours. And of course, the hours cancel out and we will end up with kilometers as the final unit. Now, just to be clear about uh, how the units cancel out, uh, this is very, very similar to the situation where we say uh, we have uh, dollars, <clears throat> let's say per, uh, per pen, and uh, we multiply this by the number of pens. Like this. And if I can add a couple of numbers in here, uh, we can say, let's say, uh, one pen is $1.30, and then we bought, let's say, um, let's say three pens. Three over here. There we go. And, uh, and therefore, uh, just as in this case, we can cancel out the pens and arrive at the value of 390 uh, as the total amount of money that we paid, uh, the pens cancel out. Same thing here multiplying kilometers per hour by hours, 
the average cancel out and we get common phase. This is sort of similar to re reduction of fractions where we can reduce numerical values. It, it's also possible to uh, reduce quantity or unit symbols because they also refer to the sizes of quantities and therefore they are mathematical entities. Okay, let me um, get rid of this. All right, so now that we know that uh, all the terms have the same unit, identical units, kilometers, kilometers, and kilometers, uh, then we can claim that, uh, that the equation is consistent. Okay, let's take a look at problem number two now. On the right side, calculate the mass of a molecule of C2H4. The atomic masses of C and H are 12.01 AMU per atom and 1.008 AMU per atom, respectively. The following equation models the problem above. M is the mass of a molecule of C2H4 in AMU, and M is equal to 12.01 times 2 plus 1.008 times 4. Show that the equation is consistent. And this M should have been in italics, but that's all right. Okay, so for problem number two, uh, as, as before, we're going to identify the terms and then find their units. There are three terms in this, uh, in this equation. M, 12.01 times 2, and 1.008 times 4. Okay, so the first term is M, and the unit for it is AMU, as you can tell here, implied by the body of the word problem, and also they have told us that M is the mass of a molecule of C2H4 in AMU. The next term is 12.01 times 2, and for this one, we're going to take the units. For 12.01, the unit is AMU per atom, and you can see it here. And uh, 2 is, of course, the number of carbon molecules, uh, carbon atoms. And therefore, it's AMU per atom times atoms. And again, the atoms cancel out, and the final unit becomes AMU. The third term is 1.008 times 4, and the units, again, for 1.008 AMU per atom, which is uh, what we see here. And 4 is the number of H atoms in a molecule, so that's times atoms. Again, the atoms cancel out, and we end up with AMU. And now we can say that since all the terms have identical units, the equation is consistent. Okay, everyone, that's, uh, that's all there is to consistency. I'll see you in the next video with the topic of change in the value of a quantity. And until then, I'll be gone in 3, 2,